Good morning, everybody. This is my friend's race trailer. I've had it to do some work on it, and now it's time to return it to him. He lives in Houston, and, and I'm up here in Austin, so I am going to meet him halfway. And he's got my trailer in his storage unit because I did not have room to store both trailers. So I'm going to do a little scientific experiment here. You see, his trailer has got a 50 degree V nose, and it's got the same tires as mine, it's the same length, and it's empty. Mine is a 24 foot square nose, so on theory, the major difference is that this trailer has got the V nose and should be more aerodynamic. At least that's the common wisdom, because a pointy nose trailer obviously is more aerodynamic. So we're going to test that. Both trailers will be empty other than a few pieces of clutter. Both trailers have cabinets in the front, although the cabinets in this thing are fairly lightly built. They're from a mail order company. They're made of sheet metal and aluminum tubing. And the ones in my trailer are made of three quarter inch plywood. Both trailers have two rooftop air conditioners. This trailer, I think, is significantly lighter in weight. I can feel that when I'm accelerating. This thing feels like a feather compared to mine. And crawling under this trailer, I know that a lot of the structure is I-beam, whereas on my trailer, the structure is box tubing, which weighs a little bit more. This thing is lighter, it's got a pointier nose, and it's going to be going downhill on this trip, whereas when I come back with my trailer, I'm going to be going uphill, gaining about 300 feet of elevation. So all the advantages are for the V-Nose trailer to get better fuel mileage. It's lighter, it's going downhill, it's pointy. So we're going to test it. I'm going to drive all the way there. Once the truck is warmed up, I will reset the miles per gallon indicator and we'll just see how we do. Cruise control on at the speed limit, right lane only. It'll take longer. It'll annoy people, but it's the only way to get good data. And then I'll do the same with my trailer coming home. All right, I'm at a gas station just on the east side of Elgin, Texas. For anyone following along, it's the intersection of Highway 290 and Highway 95. And we're gonna go ahead and reset the fuel economy here. And we're gonna reset the trip odometer. Got a full tank of climate change and I'm ready to roll. Done five miles so far. Got empty road ahead of me, so I feel okay pulling out the camera. And my mileage is 8.9. Now, this has been clear highway. I just uh, I got on the road from that gas station and got up to speed and set the cruise control. And I tell you, man, if this was my trailer back there, I would be stopping to check for a problem right now because I've never gotten mileage this bad. 8.8 .8 miles to the gallon. Uh, I do want to mention the wind, by the way because that could be a factor. So there isn't any. It's a totally calm day today, which is going to be great for the test. 36 miles done, another uh, 28 to go. Speed limit here is 75, so I'm dialed in at about 74, because I don't really need to be running up on all that traffic. And also I want to get a fair test, which means no drafting. Drafting is cheating. I'm keeping an eye out. I would love to find a truck stop with a weigh station on it, find out how much this thing, this trailer actually weighs, but uh, the odds are not good that I'm going to find one. So we're just going to have to uh, make some assumptions about the trailer weight. I'm pretty sure it's lighter than mine. I'm about uh, four miles from my exit, seven miles from my destination. I've done 57.7 miles maintaining the speed limit the whole time using cruise control. Average speed, sorry, average fuel economy, 9.4 miles to the gallon. I'll give you a final update once I get to the parking lot. I have arrived at the Walmart in Brenham, Texas. Total distance, 64.4 miles. Average miles per gallon, 9.6. The last thing I got to do here is give a quick hub check and make sure everything's okay. So I'll take you along for that. 
Got ourselves the old uh, hazard fraught infrared thermometer. 81 degrees. In comparison, the side of the trailer is 56. So that's down to like a 25 degree temperature rise. 82 degrees. Eighty-three and eighty. All right, we got some really consistent temperatures here. I'm happy with that. All I got to do now is uh, wait for my buddy to pull up with my trailer. We'll do the old switcheroo, maybe grab some lunch, and then I'll be back on the road for home. All right, so now we're swapping trailers. This is going back to its owner, and here's mine. Square nose. Just for comparison before we pull out, trailers are even the same height. Got my trailer hooked up again, so now we're going to head for home. So let's reset the trip odometer and reset the fuel economy. It was 9.6 for the old trailer. Let's see what we get on the return with my heavier, supposedly less aerodynamic trailer. Let's roll. I'm on the way home now. Done about 17 miles so far, 17.4 by the clock. And I'm already seeing a significant difference. Uh, I'm up to 10.3 miles per gallon versus the uh, 9.6, I think it was. So yeah, getting a little bit of improvement to the mileage here. We'll see if it gets any better. 31 miles down. And... Uh, I'm going slightly below 75 because I've got a uh, car up ahead of me and we're matching speed and I'm trying to give him a little lead because I don't want to uh, be drafting him. That'll mess up the test. So uh, we were keeping even at 75, so I took it down to 74 and he's slowly gaining on me. But we're up to 10.6 miles per gallon. Got another 34 miles to go. day to be driving. Getting to the end of the trip here. We are at 64 miles and 11.4 miles per gallon coming into Elgin. This is where we began at this Texaco on the left here. gonna be as exact as possible so I'm gonna go right back to where I began probably doesn't matter but why not do it right This is where we began. Sixty-four point five miles, eleven point five miles to the gallon with the less air less aerodynamic square nose trailer. So I think we've got pretty good proof that at least for this truck, the Vino's is not necessarily better. I'm going to go the rest of the way home and then I will give you my final thoughts. Let's look at some final numbers. My truck is a 2011 Ram 2500 diesel. Towing the Vino's trailer, I went 64.4 miles and averaged 9.6 miles to the gallon. On the return trip with the flat nose trailer, I went 64.5 miles and I averaged 11.5 miles to the gallon, almost two miles to the gallon better. The reason for the slight increase in distance is due to the way the exits are laid out on the return trip. You have to travel slightly further. 
My friend who owns the Vino's trailer also was interested in this test, and so he was tracking his mileage as well. I don't have his exact distance, but I do have his final miles per gallon numbers. He went approximately 82 miles to get to me. His tow truck is a 2011 Silverado 2500 HD with a diesel motor. Towing my flat nose trailer, he got 10.6 miles to the gallon. And on his return trip, towing his Vino's trailer, he got 9.6 miles to the gallon, exactly one mile to the gallon different. Now, people may note that he did not get as good of a fuel mileage as I did with my Dodge. I don't think that has anything to do with the inferiority or the superiority of either vehicle. The real reason for that is that I was on an open highway with very little traffic, and he was driving across Houston. Now, if you've never driven across Houston, uh, let me assure you that you cannot go anywhere without somebody cutting you off or brake checking you or doing something to make you slow down. And so then you have to speed up, and that's going to kill your fuel mileage. It's just the difference between city driving and country driving. So he actually got pretty good numbers, and I have a feeling that with his truck being 10 years newer, were we doing a back-to-back -back test on the same route and towing the exact same trailer, he would probably get better fuel mileage numbers than I did. But I think they would be fairly close because ultimately there's only so much energy you can extract from the fuel, and both trucks are large, non-aerodynamic bricks. Why did the Vino's trailer not perform as well as the flat nose trailer? I think it comes down to the fact that the Vino's trailer is made of sharp angles. If you look at the front of my trailer, there is a large fiberglass piece up top that blends between the front wall and the roof. And there are formed aluminum pieces that blend between the front wall and the side walls. So there really aren't any sharp corners on the front of the trailer. On the Vino's trailer, it's all sharp corners. You've got a 90 degree angle between the front and the roof, and you've got a shallower angle, approximately 45 degrees, between the front and the sides. And when the air has to cross that sharp angle, it forms a vortex, and that vortex is what's killing the mileage. I do believe that if you could build a Vino's trailer that had nice radius corners, you would see a significant advantage, probably better fuel mileage than even the flat nose gives you. But the problem is, that's very expensive to do. V-noses already cost a lot, and I don't think people would want to pay the extra money to make that happen. So what's my final takeaway from all this? If you want the best possible fuel mileage out of your trailer, get a trailer with a rounded nose. If you can't get that, get something like mine with a flat nose that has radii, where the flat nose transitions to the walls and roof. And then the last option, as far as mileage, is the Vino's. The real advantage of the Vino's is not aerodynamics, but extra storage. You gain a lot of square footage up at the front, and you do so without sacrificing your turning radius, and that's a really nice feature to have in a trailer. But if you are considering buying a Vino's because you want the absolute best fuel mileage, I urge you to reconsider. I think that you would be better off with a flat-nose trailer. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.